Federal government, through the Finance Act of 2021, approved a 10 naira per litre tax on non alcoholic carbonated and sugar sweetened beverage known as SSBs. The implementation of this tax in June this year saw a significant increase in the price of these products. Responding to the outcry, the decision elicited from Nigerians, government says consumption of sweetened drinks poses a health hazard, which places another burden on its doorstep. So Nigerians who want to consume them must be willing to pay more. The tax, which is still a far cry from the World Health Organization's recommended minimum of 20% excise duty on SSBs, is considered by persons in support of it as a significant step forward. But there are complaints of poor implementation as those against it, like the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, want the tax abolished. Joining us now is Dr. Francis Fabule. He is a public health professional at the Department of Periodontology and Community Dentistry, University College Hospital, Ibadan, and an associate lecturer in the College of Medicine, University of Ibadan. Dr. Fagbule is passionate about public health research with a special interest in oral health and non-communicable uh, diseases. All right, thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Thank you for having me. Now, can you tell us what this tax represents? Because it has generated a lot of controversy, as we stated earlier, since its introduction into the Finance Act of uh, 2021. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for the question. I think the tax, as it were, represents a first baby step uh, by the government to better the lives, especially the health of Nigerians. Uh, saying that can get people a bit confused, so it's important that I put a background to it. Right. Uh, we're talking about um, sugar sweetened beverages, uh, and we must know that just to categorize, we can have the artificial or the added sugar and um, the natural one. The natural is what we get from the fruit, the vegetables, mm. the cereals. But here the point is on the added sugars to many times the drinks, the energy drinks. Now the first question is this, what nutritional value do we get from this added sugar? Uh, I must tell you that we have little or none from those added sugar. As a matter of fact, what it does is just pump into you calories. Now the next question we then have is, what effect do these things have on our body? Mm. It causes a lot of health challenges. Now, we've been talking about the rise in non-communicable disease among Nigerians. Mm -hmm. uh, with people now die of different um, ailments, cardiovascular diseases, and it has been on the increase. Now, the consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages play a major role in this happening. So when the government comes and says, oh, we are increasing taxation on this, it is recognizing the fact that increase in taxation drives down consumption. And when there's reduction in consumption, then the health of the people are better, especially the ordinary Nigerians. Thank you very much. Well, um, I want you to clarify something here. Yeah? Uh, the sugar we take from fruits, I know that's what you're saying, that natural sugar. Uh, can, it be over, can it be too much? Because, mm -hmm. you see, for instance, one of, the sweets, one of, one of those sweet ones, uh, is uh, pineapple. Yeah. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. There was one time I was consuming a lot of pineapple. Somebody told me, it's still sugar. <laughs> Don't take it too much. You want, to, you want to escape coke. And you're trying to take pineapple. He said, it's still too much sugar. Thank you very much for the question. So, and that is why this discussion is around the oh, added banana. sugar. <laughs> you see, the sugar from the pineapple comes with other minerals, with other vitamins, with mm. other fibers. And it's a di bit different from the sugar we talk about, the added sugar, because when it gets into the body, it takes a bit of time for the body to process it. So it's good. The challenge here is the added sugar. You take a cup of coffee and you drop in two uh, cubes, cubes of sugar. Uh, you are making donuts. In fact, processing it, they add sugar. But the most important addition 
into our sugar consumption in the country is those uh, sugar sweetened beverages. I won't mention the names, but we talk about the soft drinks, we talked about the energy drinks, we talk about the fruit juice that is supposed to just be only fruit. But we know that many times we put sugar to it so that it even becomes be sweet. Sweet, sweet, there sweeter was one than time, that. There was one time uh, uh, research was done during the uh, Second World War uh, on, on American troops. Uh, they discovered that um, when they were given juice to drink, the juice that many people think, oh, if I take juice, it's very it's vitamin C. Mm. It's not the same thing as taking Coke and so on. And the research said that, hey, that what, when they took the sugar, when they took it, they, 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 they started having a lot of sugar problems, uh, sugar-related problems, were taking too much of it. And they distinguished, distinguished it from taking uh, um, fruits. That you, it's better you just take the fruits Fruit. rather than take the juice. Many people don't know. I had a friend one day, I visited in his office, and he always had a, uh, it was a commissioner then, he had a, a habit of... Uh, Taking juice, I say, ah, I say this is what I, I say this is what you are taking is sugar, and uh, you know the person, the, uh, if I scandalize, and uh, what are you saying? I'm taking the fruit here. Yeah. I say check it, check it, and he checked online, and uh, and he discovered yes, it's just a lot of just a lot of sugar. Yeah. But my second question, can you overdose on fruits on the sugar on, on the fruits and sugar? So, in all honesty, we know that too much of everything is bad, mm. but again. Talking about those fruits, those vegetables, those cereals, they are not our problem. The major problem, because they, also, they are also nutritious, they contribute calories to us that we need. The challenge here is those processed ones, and they are added indiscriminately to the um, things that are produced. And why it's even worse is the fact that it's been linked to cause health problems. And that's why I'm saying that this issue of taxation is something that at the public health level, we've been pushing for a long time. And other countries having identified that sugar plays a major role in the problems of non-communicable diseases in their country, they've instituted this and they are reaping the benefits. So for Nigeria, the WHO recommended about 20% on the price. You see, that is another part that we're not discussing. So what it means is that if a product costs 100 Naira, the tax you are going to impose should eventually come to the extent that it now start, it will now cost 120 Naira. Naira. What we even have now, talking about the 10 Naira per liter, common drinks is about 500 CL, uh, ml. That is less than a liter. So if you are imposing 10 naira per liter, it means you are just saying that 5 naira should be added on. So a drink costs 150 naira. You are saying, okay, make it 155. The truth is that, and I listened to some of the people from the industry, I think last week, they are even absorbing that. They can't, they, there's no point passing that to the consumer. And when that is not passed across, it means that consumption will remain. In fact, I think one of the programs some days ago in this channel was talking about how the sugar business in Nigeria has boomed. While in 2016, they were making about $713 million from sugar consumption in Nigeria. And by 2021, this has doubled to about $1.4 billion. But you know the truth is why some people are catching out. A lot of Nigerians some people are, dying, are dying as a result of that. Mm. And i give you an example. Mm. In 1995, the rate of uh, obesity mm. uh, in Nigeria was about less than a million people. Now, as at 2015, that has increased to about 5 million. Now, 2021 figure is seeing an estimate of 6 million people have diabetes. But more than just that, there's a group of people that would say pre-diabetic. They are not yet diabetic, but they are getting close. There are about 3 million of them. Now, if these people can cut down on live a healthy lifestyle, uh, better food and cut down their sugar, they won't get tipped into having diabetes. So, the same thing for cardiovascular diseases. Hypertension has increased from about 5 million to about 27 million Nigerians. Of course, we know that our population has also increased, but we are now seeing that there's about one out of every three adult Nigerians that are hypertensive. Now, what it means is that people are dying, people are suffering. With the challenge we have in our healthcare system, where it is catastrophic expenditure. Mm -hmm. Now, it means that you are, you are taking that sugar now. It's sweet, but eventually you are killing yourself. And that is why the government have the role to play.
to make sure that the healthier alternatives are the cheaper and the easier alternatives. And I think that is what the government well, is doing in this case. The producers of these sweet drinks are saying that you are killing their business. Uh, how do we strike a balance <laughs> to ensure that we do not keep, kill their business and we achieve what we want to achieve at the end of the day? It's not better to kill their business than to kill Nigerians. Okay. <laughs> so, 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 in fact, this, to start with, we don't want their businesses to die. They also contribute a lot to the Nigerian economy. But I can come here and tell you that, oh, I'm the richest man in the world. You are going to ask me to show proof, right? Mm -hmm. So I come with my bank statement. I come with my investment. And then you can verify. Somebody can come and say, oh, we have 1.5 million people that are employed. I'm going to cut this. The truth is that they said the same thing in South Africa, 2017. They said the same thing in Mexico, 2013. They said the same thing in the UK, almost a decade after. There is no evidence. Studies have been found out that out of over 45 countries, there has been no job loss. The Truga industry in Nigeria, you see, I said again at the meeting we had, they said, oh, we've been having challenges with the 10 naira per liter. But thank God for data. Thank God for information. Then somebody quickly put there and say, your company has grown about 8% this year, more than the average of 5% across industry. So it means that you are doing even better than other industries. So please. I won't just say take it with a pinch of salt. I think it's a table of salt. <laughs> the fact that, oh, this is going to affect because all over the world, it has been shown that there is no negativity. But you should not take it with a pinch of sugar because you have diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> and like you have rightly said, the truth is, are you saying that Nigerians should continue to die because mm. you want to make money? Mm -hmm. Of a truth is, and I say this, when the breadwinner of a family dies as a result of diabetes, you should know that diabetes, especially when it's uncontrolled, we, there's this syndrome we call the lazy leukocyte syndrome. Your body cannot fight infection. Mm. And it means that any form of infection that gets into you is going to overwhelm you. I had a patient about a few weeks ago. I'm a dentist, a community dentist specialist with tooth decay, all in the tooth. And immediately, infection sets in, gets into the body. When I saw, looked into the man, the man was robust. I saw some features and I said, oh, I, I think I suspect a background diabetes. And she was like, no, I'm fine. And then I said, please, let's do a test. When we checked the test, it was over the roof. The truth is that infection is already setting. You, to treat infection, remove the source of the infection. But if you remove this tooth, healing will not take place. That's why people have diabetic foot ulcer. They cut their legs when they have injuries yeah. from there. Mm -hmm. And I had to call the tertiary institution. Can we refer? What can we do? She went there. And a couple of days later, I got the information that she had died. Oh now, this is somebody who had died as a result of a toothache because of the underlying diabetes, uncontrolled yeah, diabetes. Not only the toothache that killed her. Exactly. But, but you diabetes. know, so when we are giving feed figures, we are going to say, oh, this person died of toothache. toothache no. Not knowing that the major problem here is the diabetes, underlying diabetes that the woman did not know about. A lot of Nigerians are dying as a result of all this health problem. Now, that person cannot contribute productively to the Nigerian nation. Are you now telling me that 10 naira per liter is a problem? As a matter of fact, when we look at other countries, for example, the United Arab Emirates, you know what they did was that they had a 50% increase mm. on the cost of their sugar signaling beverages. So it means that if, a sugar, if, if the product was going for 200 naira before, because of the tax they imposed, it became 300 naira. UK, the same thing. South Africa, the same thing. So when you say 10 naira per liter, it's still a far cry from where we should go. But we say it's the beginning. I'm sure that in the next dispensation, we're going to talk about the fact that the WHO recommendation needs to be enforced you know, and be made you well. Know, you know, if you drink Coke in Nigeria or drink Fanta in Nigeria or drink Sprite in Nigeria, and you go to the UK and drink the same thing, or in the US, you drink the same thing, or in Paris, you drink the same thing, you discover that the Nigerian, Nigerian sugar content is high. Good what question. have we done about it? I had the discussion with this, with uh, Mayor So Rest in Peace, uh, Doya Akunji, uh, about this issue. And then she said she was going to send me one book and so on. He said, putting her, I said, brother, you see the fight I had with these people over this thing. They deliberately increased the sugar in order to make you and I say, oh, after taking that uh, uh, rice, rice, rice and dodo and put the coke inside your mind, you, yeah, then, then you say, oh, it has hit the spot. Exactly. It has actually hit the wrong spot. <laughs> <laughs> and things like that. So, so why can't we, first of all, 
manage manage the content and supervise the content of the sugar. Some people say, oh, in some part of the country that is very, very hot mm. and that you need to get a lot of sugar. But that's that talking about the north. But you have a lot of diabetes in the north because of this. Mm. Because, because the, 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 the tea, for instance, that they take too, there's a lot of sugar. When I was doing youth service and I take, I, I, I wanted to take tea in one of the Meshites, and I tasted, I couldn't. The sugar was superlative, you know? No, and that's the same thing that they, 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 they are doing with the Cokes and the sugar. I mentioned the protos, everybody knows them, you know? And then, then they, they, they take it. So why can't we say, okay, this is the level, and we can be punished because this is a verifiable. You can just buy a bottle in the market and say, this is, this is your product. This is the level of sugar inside. You have to be punished for it. You have to pay. You have to be fined for it. For, for, because in, 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 in New York, for instance, even the same level of um, sugar that is even lower than the one we have here, the mayor decided some years ago that no, the, the, the bills that we are getting from diabetes is too much in this city. So the bottle should not be big again, but make it small. But you know, people can always say, okay, rather than buy one bottle, give me three yeah. bottles of okay. yeah. <laughs> so, so, sir, to corroborate what you have said, yes. and that's why some, what some countries have done, like the UK. Mm. So they said, okay, if you have about 80 grams per um, liter, mm. then the taxation is going to be 0 0.24 pounds. Mm. Mm. Now, if you have below that, it's going to be 0 0.17 pounds. So what happened was definitely everybody started reducing reformulation of their product mm. to have the lower ones in there. And again, that's why I said, you see this 10 naira per liter, we are just beginning. We need to have a robust engagement as to how we can ensure that the Sugar industry and those people, sugar shooting beverages, mm. they drive down what they have. I, yesterday, I got one of these drinks and I looked at the label and what I just saw was um, sugar present. They didn't give the exact That's quantity the of what is there. Mm. So it means that, again, there's, fraud. There, there's a lot of fraud there. In fact, these days you get um, um, even powdered milk yes. and you can see grains of sugar, sugar in, in powdered milk. Is there's a lot of abuse. And you see, does that mean that there, there is no enforcement? We, are not, we have not even started the journey itself. What of, what of these uh, cocoa drinks? Mm. Because cocoa itself, people don't know. Cocoa is not sweet. Cocoa is bitter. Yes. So to, to get all those your cocoa drinks to be as sweet as you are, they have to pour, put in a lot of sugar. You see, um, people often have the question, so how much added sugar is enough? And um, again, I had somebody quote a very wrong figure here at the time. The WHO has said that about, for adult women, about 100 calories from added sugar is enough in a day. In fact, it should not be up to that. Uh, and again, America Heart Association and Co, they've done research into this. Now, added sugar of about 100 calories translates into about six cubes of sugar. So what it means is that in a whole day, the recommendation is to say, don't have added sugar that is more than six cubes. Remember, added sugar is not just coming from the sugar swindy beverages. Like we mentioned, if you buy donuts, there's added sugar into it. They even put some jam and cover it. When you get, um, when you take yeah, they, they will, they will sprinkle, when you want people to sprinkle it with sprinkle, sugar. Yes, yeah, exactly. You get, yeah. you get popcorn, they put sugar into it, and then give you a bottle of Coke or what have you to eat. Now, but if all you need as added sugar should not be about more than six cubes a day, a day, one bottle of soft drink, I saw the figure online, it's almost about 13 cubes. So it means that taking that one alone, you have overshot your recommendation as it is. Now, the reason why the best thing is not to have them, but we know that, okay, let's cut it to the minimum. So the sugar industry, complaining about this. I think they are not being fair to Nigerians. I asked a question earlier with regards to enforcement because we talked about there's still fraud in, in, in this whole process and we are saying that um, we are implementing 10 Naira tax. Yet, are we seeing that enforcement? Have we even really started, even when we have that document on the ground? Now, to the best of my knowledge, I have not seen any movement in that direction. You see, uh, and why do I say so? The focus for us in public health is the effect on the price of that drink. 
as a result of that tax. What I understand from the people in the industry currently is that they are even absorbing, and it's easy to absorb. Now, but apart from that, how many times have we seen it where people go, where they go around to ensure that they comply with this? No, it is not there. So, is there even a law that says this is how much you should have into it? I don't think there's anyone. The discussion still around, okay, sugar per liter, uh, the number, naira per liter. This so, is the, this is the kind of uh, picture that makes people say, oh God, where's my own share? And this is what, <laughs> this is what they are targeting. The sugar industry, the sugar sugar beverages companies are targeting, targeting children. Yes. They are also playing on the challenges that we have at the moment. They are making smaller bottles. Now, people are, parents are shifting now. Instead of giving their children fruit, healthy they drinks. They give them smaller bottles. Now, they, now they're giving them all these uh, drinks to school. And we know that obesity amongst even children is getting higher. Yes. And the health problems amongst them is getting higher. When we talk about uh, public health and non-communicable diseases, there are about four major issues that drive that process. Mm. One is the tobacco use. Mm. Second is the harmful consumption of alcohol. The third is when we talk about the sedentary lifestyle. And then we talk about the diet. And in terms of the diet, we are talking about the role that sugar sugar beverages play, mm. uh, trans fatty acids and the like. We already have something on tobacco. We already have something on alcohol. We have on, now we are having on sugar, and we are saying that it should be more. Because there's a concept we call the um, uh, common risk factor approach. For you to solve, it, sugar causes cardiovascular diseases, causes obesity, Diabetes mellitus, I'm a dentist, is a major problem for dental caries. Now, instead of going after these challenges one after the other, when you look at the root cause, sugar, tobacco, and you tackle them, you are basically going to be saying, solving, killing three, four, five birds with one stone. And I think that but, is what the that government is doing. That begs the question of how aware the level of awareness of Nigerians with regards to the dangers of the continuous consumption of sugar. Like just like the woman that you just said. Exactly. Yeah. So again, you see, it's not one cap fits all. There needs to be a multi-pronged approach. There needs to be a multi-sectoral approach. The role of government is to give policy, and that is where they have started from. But we also need to create that enabling environment. Now, to what you have mentioned, we need to develop people's skill education. And I'm sure that that is one of the things we are going to achieve from this program. So public health, uh, non-governmental organizations, we need to do a lot of campaign awareness so that people will know. In fact, they should even be able to check the labels or whatever they are taking. But one thing that has shown all over the world that has driven down consumption is taxation from government. And it's not just 10 naira per liter, really. It is something significant that is translated into the prices what of the, of the, the role of a car car carbohydrates. All right, we need to, quickly because we need to wrap up. Yes, yeah, so of course, carbohydrates is also a part of the nutrient, and eventually the body breaks down to, to into energy. Yes, yeah, mm. sugar, as it were. But we are saying that those ones are still better mm. when we compare them with the added ones that immediately mm. it gets to the body. The body uses them all very fast, and you are craving for more. You mentioned right. something about, oh, I want to take Coke. I want to take this because right, there's a kind go. of addiction that is attached to it. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Dr. Francis Fagule, public health professional at the Department of Periodontology and Community Dentistry, University College Hospital, Ibadan. Most thank you for your time on the program. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. They want to sweeten us today. <laughs> <laughs>